What's up, Internet? And Canty here, and I want to show you one of my new uh, favorite mastering tips using Isotope Ozone 7. Uh, you're listening to Jank Yucca right now. This is going to be a track that will appear on a compilation that me and Zebler are curating on Gravitas Recordings. <laughs> Right now, you are just hearing the uh, high-res 24-bit render go through my Ozone plugin right now. Um, but let me show you a tip that will help you master visually more than with your ears. Because unless you're in a really great studio, which unfortunately not all of us have access to, uh, your room is only going to color the sound. Your speakers are only going to be biased in some way, you know. So. If, you, if when in doubt ever, you can kind of hear this room has some echoes, um, it's, be it's best to, to trust your eyes, and there's great metering software out there right now. Uh, but this is a trick that has been helping me a lot. In this track right here, by the way, notice that I have both of these tracks. This is my reference track. This is my Jank Yucca track. My reference track is in the same group as my mastering chain. I always put mastering chains in a group instead of the master channel or a track. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my mastering chain and uh, turn off my compression and all my mastering and turn on this other guy I got here. This is just a normal EQ. And as you can see, I've actually, I've actually turned off every band. So this is a passive EQ. But what I have down here on the bottom is uh, matching filter. Uh, so what do you do with this thing? You play a track into it and you capture it as reference audio and then you play your tune into it and you reference that as, I mean, that becomes target audio and what it'll do is it'll show you the difference between the two things. So what I've been doing is turning off my mastering and then playing a fully mastered track into the matching filter. Let's do it right now. I got a Borso remix of Run DMT here that is just booming. So you, you press capture here and it's just gonna start averaging all of these volume levels across the whole spectrum. Oops, <laughs> I actually, you don't want to hit stop before you stop capturing. That was a mistake that, that I make sometimes. Let me try it one more time. There we go. Okay, that's, that's good enough. Basically, this is giving me a visual aid for where the, the final mastered frequency spectrum is for that track. So after that, I turn off the master track, and I turn on my mastering chain again, and I play my track going through mastering plugin into the target audio. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Oops, uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, as you can see, now we have a guide which is a yellow line, and we have a guide which is a blue line, and they are superimposed over each other. So this is an excellent visual comparison to see where my levels of things are at compared to the Vorso track. For instance, Vorso's bass goes a little bit harder than mine, and I can see it's right around the same frequency range. So what that tells me is that I got a little headroom to boost my bass. Uh, that being said, my track is, or the Jank Yucca track is much warmer. 
around the 100 to 150 hertz range. Uh, so it could be that, you know, I, I have some, it could be that, that I want to kind of slope my EQ when I get to it. Also, look around the 1K range right here. Um, the Vorso track definitely hitting the, the about 600 to 2K range, a lot more than mine. And also, again, in the 4,000 to 6,000 range, and then a little bit sloping down. We can also bring up this amount, and it will show me the EQ curve that I would need to make in order for my um, track to match the Vorso track. And this is a little wild. When you turn this all the way up, like, who would ever EQ <laughs> that? Uh, but what this is for me is it's it's a visual indication of the difference that I would have to make in order to get my track to at least average the volumes of those different frequency ranges. Um, all right, all of this is taken with a grain of salt because, first of all, the Vorso track might not be the best reference track for this Janky Ecker track. It's a lot more aggressive. It's a lot more, you know, kind of a bit, bit more powerful. And this Janky Ecker track is really glitchy, you know, it's got moments of silence and contrast like that. Um, so these are kind of, they just help me, you know, visually. I can choose, I can go into my EQ and see what it sounds like if I put a little spike at 1K.